Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel for another episode of the Roots Learning series recorded within Train Simulator. In this episode we're going to be taking another look at the Chat Moss route from Alan Thompson Simulation, and I'm going to be driving a stopping service between Warrington Bank Quay on the West Coast Main Line and Liverpool Lime Street. Alan Thompson Simulation included the short section to Warrington which gives more scenario potential than just the straight A to B Liverpool to Manchester run, and it's a great place to be able to run the old class 319 units. The scenario that I'm driving is one that comes with the route following the timetable of train 2 Foxtrot 25, which is the 9.10am northern service from Warrington Bank Key through to Liverpool, with stops along the way including Earlstown, St Helens Junction, Lee Green, Rainhill, Whiston, Highton, Roby, Broad Green, Wavertree Technology Park, Edge Hill, and finally Liverpool Lime Street, with a total journey distance of just over 19 and a half miles. The train that I'm driving for this journey is the Class 319 electric multiple unit. The Class 319s um, were constructed between 1987 and 1990 by British Rail Engineering Limited at Holgate Road in York, and they've been in service since 1987. They were originally built for the then new Thameslink route between Brighton and Bedford, and were built with dual voltage capability as a result, meaning that they could run off the 25kV 50Hz AC overhead electrification system, as well as the 750V DC third rail electrification system. From 2015 these units started to enter service with Northern Rail, as they were replaced on the Thameslink routes initially by class 387 units, and of course later by class 700 units. A number of Class 319s have also been converted to Class 769s with the addition of diesel engines to allow them to run on non-electrified routes. Each Class 319 unit is formed of four coaches and is around 260 feet or 79 metres in length. Um, each unit weighs around 140 tonnes and they have a maximum power output of 1,328 horsepower per four coach unit. The maximum speed for each unit is 100 miles per hour, though the maximum speed limit for this journey today will be 90 miles per hour. I've just uh, jumped into the cab of the Class 319 to quickly set up ready for departure here. So the first thing that we need to do is press Shift and W to activate the master key, which is on the outside of the reversing handle in front of us there. Now that I've done that, I'm going to move the reversing handle into the neutral position and reset the AWS self-test sequence. Now that that's done, I'm going to press H to turn on the headlights. I'm not going to turn on the driver safety device with Control and D because it defaults to on uh, on this train. So when you press Control D, you're actually switching it off. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is set up the GSMR radio system. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to click on the entry key. Now enter the train's head code, which is two Foxtrot two five, and then the signal number that we're sat in front of, which is one nine three and now tick that. Didn't, couldn't quite catch the uh, tick button for a moment there, and it's just uh, saying wait, check head code, and now we're registered on the radio system. Uh, now also to mention here is the driver reminder appliance, which is the red button there. If the signal ahead is clear, then you can release that, so I am going to release that now by pressing the Y key. Um, so just to quickly go through the cab controls, on the left hand side we've got a standard west code three step brake, and uh, that corresponds to the uh, brake gauge that you can see to the left of the speedometer. Uh, so the right needle on the brake gauge is the brake cylinder pressure gauge. The higher that needle, then the um, sorry, the higher that needle is pointing, then the harder the brakes are applied. And when that needle is at zero, then the brakes are fully released. So we've got step one, step two, full service, which is step three, and then finally an emergency setting. And generally, you try not to use above step two braking uh, when you're driving along. So you've always got some more brake force available if required. Uh, now continuing around the cab we've got the speedometer there, a nice big and easy to read speedometer in this train which is measured in miles per hour. As already mentioned the maximum speed of this train is 100 miles per hour uh, but the maximum speed limit for this journey is 90 and it's very unlikely that we're going to be able to get to 90 uh, due to the distances between stops involved on this journey. Um, just above the speedometer we've got the tabs which shows the train length, so we're actually a four car train so I'm just going to click on the left hand tab and drag it to the four just as a reminder that I'm driving a four coach unit 
And just below the speedometer, we have the horn, which is a two-tone horn, controllable with the space bar and the B key. Just to mention, of course, I am using the Armstrong Powerhouse Enhancement Pack for the Class 319. Um, well, pretty much every British train that I drive is using some kind of Armstrong Powerhouse Enhancement these days. And finally, to the right-hand side here, we have the throttle control, which has got four notches of power. I believe that these correspond to um, shunt, series, parallel, and weak field. Um, you can go up to notch four, which is weak field, fairly quickly to get the maximum level of acceleration available for this unit. The destination display on the outside of the train is already set for this scenario, so I don't need to set that with the F7 and F8 keys. And so now we've had a look at the cab and had a look at the basic control, Let's just take another quick look outside the train and depart out on our journey towards Liverpool Lime Street. As we departed away from Warrington Bank Key here, the speed limit was initially 50 miles per hour, but very quickly dropped to 30 miles per hour, with just under 5 miles to go to the first stop, which is Earlstown. And I've just cut the power off now around 30. I think we might have actually slipped up to 31, but that's okay. The speed limit's now going up to 60 miles per hour, so I'm just going to wait just a few seconds till we've reached this second gantry here, and then the rear of the train should have cleared that 60 mile per hour speed post. So now accelerating up towards 60 miles per hour. Once we do get to 60, I'm going to go between notches one and two of power to maintain that speed. So I'm just cutting the power back now as we're reaching 60 miles per hour. As I said, between notches 1 and 2 should maintain us at around 60. Uh, the next speed change will be a further increase in the speed limit up to 70 miles per hour. So at the overbridge that we just passed on this left-hand curve here, um, we've got around three miles to go.
the speed limit's now further increasing to 70 miles per hour. Um, the speed sign there is very shaded under the overbridge, uh, so it's quite easy to miss. But yeah, at this point the speed limit's now 70. I can accelerate for now, we've got around one and a half miles to go. Uh, the gradient's now changing to an up 1 in 110 gradient, which will affect our acceleration. We've now turned away from the West Coast Main Line, which uh, went off to the right-hand side. Um, the next signal, if it's showing a double yellow aspect, that means that we are cleared into Earlstown Station. So we've got just under a mile to go at the signal, and around three quarters of a mile to go to an upcoming 20 mile per hour speed limit. I'm going to shut off the power now at this next overbridge between the two signals, and I'm going to make a step two brake application at the next signal. So this should bring our speed off nicely in time for the 20 mile per hour speed limit, which is at a junction just coming up in a moment, but it seems that the speed post is missing for some reason. Uh, the upgrade here is aiding with our braking, just to bring that speed off a bit quicker. So we're just coming up on the junction now. As you can see, there's a very sharp curve to the left. Um, the, uh, uh, should I say, Earlstown Station is almost immediately after this junction. Um, but yeah, there's no speed post here where they should be. Um, just for the route builder, if there for any future updates, please add a speed post here. So we're now coming up to Earlstown Station, and I want to stop at the end of the platform. We should now be stopping in just about the right place. As we depart away from Earlstown, the speed limit is still 20 miles per hour, though it is uh, very quickly going to be increasing to 30, uh, with just under three miles to go to the next stop, which is St. Helens Junction. The speed limit here is now increasing to 30 miles per hour. Again, another very shaded speed post under an overbridge. Um, I'm just going to wait until just before we reach the next overbridge before accelerating up towards 30. As we reach 30 miles per hour, I'm now going to shut off the power and just allow the train to coast along here. Uh, in a moment we're going to cross a junction to the right, and once we end up on that track to the right, the speed limit will then be increasing to the maximum speed limit on this journey of 90 miles per hour. And we can accelerate in a moment just as we reach the start of this viaduct that we're about to cross. So the rear of the train should now have cleared the speed uh, area, or should I say cleared the junction, and we're now cleared to accelerate up towards 90.
at this next signal. We've got just over one and three quarter miles to go. this next signal we've got around a mile to go and I'm going to shut off the power just as we pass the signal here at the overbridge coming up just ahead we've got around three quarters of a mile to go and I'm going to look out for a signal on the opposite track and once we've reached the rear of that signal I'm just going to wait just a couple more seconds and I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop at St Helens Junction so we've just passed the overbridge we're now coming up on the rear of the signal on the opposite track So now I'm going to make a step two brake application, which should bring our speed off quite nicely. At St. Helens Junction Station, I want to stop at the end of the platform. In fact, we might be slowing down a little bit too quickly there, so I've just reduced the braking temporarily. I can see the platforms coming up just ahead. Um, I don't really want to enter any faster than 30 miles per hour as a top speed, but really targeting closer to 25. Step one braking, we're probably going to enter around 20 in a moment. Okay, I'm going to release the brakes just temporarily until we enter the platform now. should now be stopping in just about the right place. As we departed away from St Helens Junction, the speed limit was still 90 miles per hour, with just over a mile to go to the next stop, which is Lee Green. This upcoming signal we've got around three quarters of a mile to go so what I'm going to do is for now I'm going to accelerate up towards 50 miles per hour then I'm going to shut off the power at 50 and allow the train to coast and then I'm going to apply the brakes at the next overbridge. So brakes on now, step two. That should bring our speed off quite nicely. I can see the platform at Lee Green coming up just ahead. Um, I think we're slowing down just about right. For a moment, I wasn't sure if I'd brake slightly too late, but no, our speed's definitely come off in time. In fact, I'm reducing the braking momentarily. Uh, here at Lee Green Station, I want to stop at the four car stop sign, which is at the end of the platform.
so we should now be stopping in just about the right place. As we departed away from Lee Green, the speed limit was still 90 miles per hour, with around one and three quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Rainhill. This upcoming signal, we've got around one and a third miles to go. going to shut off the power in a moment as we approach this following signal and then I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop at Rainhill as we approach the next overbridge. So I'm just approaching the overbridge now. I'm braking a little bit before the uh, bridge uh, to try and ensure that we get our speed off in time. I I think I can see the platforms coming up, and I think the speed is coming off about right. Yeah, I can definitely see the platforms coming up ahead. Uh, we're coming in maybe a little bit hot. I'm just going to give a quick burst of full service break, uh, just to ensure that I've got that speed off in time. Here at Rainhill Station, I want to stop um, near the footbridge uh, towards the end of the platform. I'm going to stop just a little bit beyond that footbridge, but not quite at the end of the platform. I can't see any stop markers here, so I'm just trying to work out where the stopping point might actually be. Um, but hopefully this should be just about the right place to stop. As we depart away from Rainhill, the speed limit is still 90 miles per hour, with around one and a quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Whiston. As we reach 55 miles per hour, I'm now going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast. And we've got an overbridge coming up shortly. And I'm going to apply the brakes um, shortly after the overbridge for our stop. So I'm just going to wait probably a couple of gantries past this overbridge here. So one, 
two and between the second and third I think that should be a good breaking point so I've made a step two break application and I can see the platforms coming up just ahead okay we're actually slowing down slightly too early so I've cut the braking back to step one temporarily here at Whiston Station I want to stop at the S sign which is uh, right at the end of the platform Okay, so we should now be stopping in just about the right place. As we departed away from Whiston, the speed limit was still 90 miles per hour, with around 2 miles to go to the next stop, which is Highton. Just to say, Highton's uh, one of the places I had to look up the pronunciation for, is uh, spelt H-U-Y-T-O-N. Um, I read it more as Hoyton, but I thought it might catch me out. And when I googled it and looked it up, apparently it's pronounced Highton. So hopefully Google was correct and I haven't got this wrong. At this upcoming signal, we've got around one and a quarter miles to go. So I'm now shutting off the power as the next signal comes into view just ahead. And I'm going to apply the brakes for Highton Station uh, just as we pass the signal. So I made an initial step two brake application, but our speed was coming off a little bit quick. So I've just cut back to step one for a moment and you can now see the platforms coming up just ahead. Here at Highton, I want to stop at the S sign, which is at the end of the platform. I say the S sign, it's actually the four sign, so I think I've written that down wrongly in my notes there. But yeah, we want to stop at the four car stop sign here at the end of the platform. And we should now be stopped in just about the right place.
As we departed away from Highton, the speed limit's still 90 miles per hour, with around half a mile to go to the next stop at Roby. And so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to accelerate up to 35, and then I'm going to just shut off the power and apply the brakes as we approach the platforms at Roby Station. Now I have written again, stop at the S at the end of the platform in my notes. Um, let's hope that I actually wrote it down um, correctly this time, unlike at Highton Station. And yes, there is an S sign coming up at the end of the platform, so I did write it down correctly this time. So let's just bring us to a stop just at the end of the platform here. And we should now be stopped in just about the right place. As we depart away from Roby here, the speed limit is still 90 miles per hour, with just over one and a half miles to go to the next stop, which is Broad Green. So at this upcoming signal, just after the junction there, we've got around a mile to go to Broad Green Station. Um, I'm going to accelerate up to 60 miles per hour, and then once we've reached 60, I'm just going to shut off the power at that point and allow the train to coast. And then I'm going to apply the brakes for Broad Green Station just past the next signal. made an initial step two brake application which should bring our speed off about right. You can see the platform at Broad Green coming up just ahead and here at Broad Green I'm aiming to stop around halfway along the platform. Probably slowing down slightly too quickly so I've cut back again to a step one brake application uh, just until we're in the platform now. So it's a bit of guesswork where to stop in uh, Broad Green Station as there's no clear stop marker. That's why I said I want to stop around halfway along the platform as it seems um, like the logical end of the platform to be stopping at. And so we should now be stopping in just about the right place.
As we departed away from Broad Green, the speed limit was still 90 miles per hour, though it is now soon dropping to 75 miles per hour, with around one and a quarter miles to go to the next stop, which is Wavertree Technology Park. The speed limit's dropping to 75 miles per hour at this signal. I'm now going to shut off the power to allow the train to coast at this point. Uh, we're now passing a warning for an upcoming 30 mile per hour speed limit that comes into force after the next stop. And then in a moment we're going to reach a siding on the right hand side and you can just see the red buffer stops there. So just shortly after passing that I'm going to apply the brakes for our stop. Here at Wavertree Technology Park, I want to stop at the S sign, which is at the end of the platform. I wrote down that S sign, but once again, I couldn't actually see the S sign. We'll uh, have a look for it once I'm outside, but we should now be stopped in just about the right place. As we depart away from Wavertree Technology Park, the speed limit here is still 75 miles per hour, though very quickly dropping to 30 miles per hour, um, with around a mile to go to the next stop at Edge Hill. Also, we departed away on a single yellow aspect, so I do need to bear that in mind. Um, I'm not going to accelerate above 30 at this point um, due to the fact that we're on a single yellow signal, and also due to the fact that the speed limit's going to be dropping shortly. Um, I did note that uh, at Wavertree Technology Park, once again, it was a four-car stop sign at the end of the platform, not an S. Uh, so once again, I really do need to be more careful uh, when writing up my notes. I'm not sure how I got that wrong uh, at two different stations, but I'm going to try and keep an eye out for that in the future. So the speed limit's just dropped to 30 miles per hour here at the very old style speed post and I'm just keeping an eye out on the signals ahead to make sure that we don't have a red aspect. I think that our signal is in fact green. For a moment I was confused with the signal on the far left track but no, we do have a green signal so let's just give us some power, bring us back up to 30 and now I'm going to shut off the power and allow the train to coast all of the way into Edge Hill. So I've just made a step one brake application as we're approaching Edge Hill Station. Uh, I couldn't see a clear stopping point here, so it's a bit of guesswork again. Uh, but we're going to stop closer to the other end of the platform, about one overhead gantry back from the end. The 
And so this is where I'm just guessing might be uh, the uh, correct place to stop. As we depart away from Edge Hill here, the speed limit is 30 miles per hour with around one and a third miles to go to the next and final stop, which is Liverpool Lime Street. So at this point I'm going to accelerate up to around 23, 24 miles per hour and then shut off the power to allow the train to coast as we're going to be on a downgrade almost all of the way into Liverpool Lime Street Station now. So the train will now coast up towards 30 and then I'll use the brakes to control the speed just to ensure that we don't break the speed limit along here. So the signal that we're passing there, if that one is showing a double yellow aspect, that means that the signal guarding Liverpool Lime Street Station is displaying a red, so I do have to prepare to stop at a red signal. Looks like our signal's actually now cleared to a single yellow aspect. Just double checking that. That's definitely the signal for our track. So um, we are now cleared into Liverpool Lime Street Station. Um, we need to slow down for a, well, initially there's a 25 mile per hour speed limit that comes into force at this signal, which is the platform indicating signal. And then as we reach the end of the tunnels, the speed limit is dropping to 15 miles per hour. Um, so I'm just gonna allow the train to coast for now. We're still on the downgrade, so we'll just gather a little bit of speed. But I need to make sure that I do slow down to 15 in time for the end of these tunnels. just made a slight brake application to ensure that the speed's down to 15 in time. Uh, the speed limit is dropping to 15 at this point and then um, I'm going to slow further to around 10 miles per hour for entering the platforms and uh, then I want to stop here at Liverpool Lime Street just as the buffers at the end of the line disappear into the bottom of the driver's window.
so here we are, arrival at Liverpool Live Street. Um, I just wanted to say thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, for the latest channel updates, you can find me on Facebook with the link to my Facebook page in the video description. Um, if you'd like to sponsor this channel or donate to this channel, then please visit my Patreon page for further information. And again, the link for that is in the video description. And finally, if you're interested in my travel or wildlife photography, um, then please visit my Instagram, which is at PTG Traveling. Um, so that you, there you can check out my latest travel and wildlife shots. Um, I'm sort of not updating it too much over the last few weeks as I haven't done a lot of photography, but um, uh, I plan to do a lot more photography over the coming months. Um, so yeah, once again, thank you for watching.